In this video, we're going to install and configure the Splunk Universal Forwarder and Splunk add-on for Unix and Linux on an Ubuntu 16 server instance. We're going to configure the inputs.com file and ensure that we're getting the proper logs in Splunk. First thing we're going to do is download a couple things. The Splunk add-on for Unix and Linux. I provided these links in the video's description. We're also going to download the Splunk Universal Forwarder. We'll select the Linux 64-bit .deb package. We'll click download now. And I've already done both of those. So first thing we're going to do is go into our Splunk instance and make sure we have everything configured. We'll go to settings, forwarder and receiving, and we'll make sure that we have a forwarding port configured. We'll click configure receiving. Nothing's configured yet, so we'll say new receiving port. And we'll put 9997, that's the default port. We'll click Save. Next thing we're going to do is create an index for our Linux uh, logs. We'll click Settings, Indexes. And we'll say New Index. And we'll just type Linux and click Save. Now we need to make sure our user can search that index by default. We'll go to settings, access controls, and I'm an admin user. Um, so under the roles page, admin, we're going to scroll down. And under indexes searched by default, we're going to add our new index Linux to our list. We'll click save. All right, next thing we're going to do is go to our apps, manage apps, and we're going to install the Splunk add-on for Unix and Linux on our Splunk system, not the Ubuntu system. So we'll go to choose file, we'll select the Unix add-on, we'll say open, upgrade the app, and click upload. Now we're going to need the app on the Splunk server because it's going to need the transforms and props to do some parsing so that we can pull out the data that we're looking for. So it's going to prompt us to restart. We'll click restart now. Okay. Splunk's restarted. We'll click OK. And we'll log back in. Go ahead and log back in. This is for the Unix and Linux add-on. We'll say set up later. We're going to do that on the forwarder. Now everything is set up for Security Onion and Splunk via the GUI. The only other thing that we have to do is ensure that the Security Onion Splunk instance allows port 9997. So if we go to our home IDS instance log in here right click and open up a terminal and we'll issue sudo ufw allow 9997 put our password in and that should be all the setup that we need um, now we can focus on the ubuntu server instance and just to make things easier, I have the instance running here, but I'm going to go ahead and log in via PuTTY. Um, this will allow me to copy and paste some things in. Just go ahead and log in. All right, now I've already downloaded and SCP'd the add-on and forwarder to this Linux instance. So once we have the files, first thing we're going to do is sudo dpkg tac i to the Splunk Forwarder file. This is going to go ahead and install a Splunk Forwarder in the proper directory. Now we're going to go ahead and start the Splunk Forwarder. Opt Splunk Forwarder bin Splunk start. We're going to say space tac tac accept dash license 
space tech tech answer dash yes this is going to bypass the license agreement we're going to put the user admin in I recommend this user as some apps require it we're going to put our password in next thing we're going to do is add our forward server sudo opt splunk forwarder bin splunk add forward dash server we'll put our IP 192.168.0.77 and we'll add the port colon 9997 click enter we're gonna have to log in with the Splunk username we created alright now we're gonna enable Splunk to boot at start sudo opt Splunk forwarder bin Splunk enable space boot dash start says file exists so we're good um, now everything should be configured for that now we can focus on the add-on for Unix and Linux so we'll just go ahead and list out the current directory and we can see the add-on still there we're gonna do a sudo tar tac zxvf on the file Splunk add-on now we're gonna chone the file with tac r Splunk colon Splunk for that entire directory excuse me it's gonna give the proper permissions for the directory so we can make modifications within the GUI sudo move the Splunk TA for Nix to the proper directory opt Splunk Etsy apps and we're going to go ahead and modify the inputs.com file under opt Splunk forwarder Etsy apps Splunk TA for Nix default inputs.com. I'm going to go through here and just decide which of these inputs I want to enable. Um, I want to make sure that I add the index equals Linux to each of these stanzas so that it goes in the proper index and we can change things in here um, like the interval we could choose 120 seconds make sure disabled equals zero and continue to go through and enable these inputs adding the index stanza as well as disabled equals zero you know change the interval to whatever you see fit um, I'm just gonna fast forward through this but you can go ahead and enable whichever inputs you think are going to be valuable for your organization. So we've got the inputs that we want. We'll go ahead and save off this file. I'm going to make sure that the permissions and everything are set correctly. We'll cd into the opt Splunk forwarder Etsy apps directory. We'll take a look at all the permissions. They look good. Owner Splunk, group Splunk for everything. Now what we want to do is go ahead and restart the Splunk forwarder once we've made all these changes to the inputs.com file. issue sudo splunk restart and once that's done we'll go into our splunk instance click on the app drop down and select search and reporting we'll type in here index equals Linux and this should give us all the logs that we're ingesting from that Ubuntu machine can see it's populating uh, we can go down to our source types take a look at all the source types that we enabled and we can go ahead and drill down into any one of these like bash history this is going to give us a list of all the commands that I've issued on the box you can also 
take a look at some of the other data that's pulling out we can see 104 fields it's grabbing we can drill into something else like netstat these are the ports that are listening on the device um, but something else I want to point out is the time this time is incorrect for the event my current time is 723 so we want to change this for my user um, we're going to go into settings access control and initially we went to the roles tab now we're going to go click on the users tab and change the time for my user which is admin We'll click edit and under time zone I'm going to select proper time zone and click save. Uh, we're going to have to put our password in under old password. Click save and we'll go back to the event and we should see that the time matches current time index equals Linux and now the time of the event is 727 which is very close to my time so everything's set up configured we validated that we're getting the logs um, the forwarder is working properly we're ingesting everything and I think we can call that a success so thanks for watching this video the next video is going to be installing the Splunk Forwarder on a Windows instance. Thanks.